I got into trouble the other day because I retweeted a tweet on our official TU account that said um, internships. They're just such a fucking terrible <laughs> thing, aren't they? And I didn't even think about the bad language component. Our boss did. <laughs> it's like, hmm, hmm. Depends on your languages. So, we'll start with who and... Yeah, well, just yeah, who you are, uh, what your role is, um, and what you're doing, um, who you're doing it with or for, uh, and then uh, after that we'll go back into uh, what it was like uh, in your insecure work situation, um, what uh, prompted you to change or to, to make that uh, change to more permanent work, uh, and then what's happening now, because it sounds like you're still in a bit of a limbo in a way, but we'll just say so just who yep. you are and what you to begin with, it'd be great. Yeah. So my name's um, John Wilson. I'm on a print five contract at the Department of Design at Tiger Polytechnic. Okay. Um, and so uh, you're permanent now. What uh, were you beforehand? What was the what were the characteristics of your insecure work? I've always been. I have actually been um, when I first came to the Polytechnic uh, 12, 10, 11 years ago. For the first year I was just on um, like a temporary contract and then um, it became permanent 0.5 which has been yep. for, for 10 years. So what's the actual nature of the insecurity for you at the moment then? Um, well at the time um, my I was scheduled my contract was for 0.5 but the nature of um, how my job was timetabled uh, meant that I had to periods where I had um, not much work on at the poly and periods where I had lots of work on but the problem with the issue was that I was um, asked to um, be there for 0.5 hours um, when um, when it was quiet but then also I had to um, um, do the hours that were actually uh, when the hours were more than 0.5 I was expected to do those yeah. hours and that's where the conflict was. So, so how did it make you feel, because obviously then some, day, some weeks you're working way more than your actual, actual hours. How did it make you kind of feel? What did it start doing to you? Um, it, at first, because I came from industry um, where you kind of just have, I was used to working kind of crazy hours in the film industry. So at first I didn't really, it wasn't an issue. And then I thought, all right, then I kind of, after a year or so, I worked out that it was kind of I'm working hours that I'm not getting effectively paid for, which was, um, I don't know, it's not a great feeling to feel you're giving your labour away for nothing. Um, and, and it's frustra frustrating when um, that you're not kind of heard either when you do so. Is that one of the issues you found with someone who wasn't? Here all you know in the institution all the time wasn't in that space. Is it? it's actually hard to get your voice out to have to have a say? Is there a, is there fear or is it just the on this one issue? Yeah, it was. I did feel like I was unheard. But I think, I mean, I think, I think the politics is quite good uh, the listening side, but just on this one issue, it, it wasn't, and I wasn't I wasn't heard, um, and that's I don't know, it went from annoyance to frustration to verging on being disillusioned with working here and got to the point where I was probably considering to leave as I didn't want. I think you're quite well paid in the film industry. So, so what was the catalyst for trying to get something happening or what happened to, to change things because they have changed? Um, the end of 2018 um, my timetable had fell in a certain way, but basically I was scheduled to have, um, I think it was in a certain on a few weeks, 35 hours of contact with students, which is physically kind of impossible, and then you've got prep and all that sort of stuff. So that's when it became on paper, you could actually see what the issue was, and then at that point, um, yeah, I kind of um, spoke to the union. So, how do you feel now? You've got you've got a different situation. Things feeling a little better, or 
Oh, no, definitely. I mean, through through the union, um, we had meetings with um, the poly, and it kind of went through like due process, and I was happy with the outcome. And then, in terms of my um, actual working now, it feels a lot more. I have more control over what I've, over my hours. Whereas before, I felt like I didn't, I didn't have it, much control. So, yeah. So I think it's benefited myself, and it's, I mean, it's benefited my colleagues as well. I think um, they can see that you can resolve stuff through the union, and also I think it's benefited the employers as well because I've got, I'm not being digging myself up. They've kept me, and having a happier employer is a better than having an unhappy one. That's great. Yep. The control thing's an interesting one, isn't it? The sense of control over your own destiny, destiny place, to the future, whatever. Yeah, well, I think in a way that you are, I don't know, in some ways, I'm, I've been freelance since I was 16. I've never, this is my first ever PAYE job. Yeah. So in effect, you are giving away certain control by just being PAYE. So yeah, so that's why it was kind of um, it was a challenge to kind of to like lose that control and then just to feel like it, the control wasn't being dealt with very well. Totally. Great. Yep. Awesome. Thank you very much, John. That's that was fantastic. great. That was great.